Yes. We're police officers. Where's your husband? You know what this is about. Get your clothes and come on down to headquarters. Your own clothes. I don't know. I don't remember. I told you everything I know. You don't remember. You passed 21 phony checks in a couple of hours yesterday afternoon. I can understand how you might forget a few of them. Who is Lieutenant Harris? He stood you up, let you get the merchandise, and then didn't show? You admit the forgeries? Want to tell us where we can find Harris? He doesn't exist. My name is Mary Fletcher. I'm to see Mrs. Carlson. I've just come from the prison. Hello there, Mary. Glad to see you. Come into my office through here. Sit right down there. Just relax. I expect you're glad to be out. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I certainly am. You served 18 months on a two-and-a-half-year sentence. Good record at the institution. I'm to be your parole officer for the next year, so we might as well get to know each other. Have any trouble getting here? No. It's just that I... I guess I'm nervous. Every girl goes through the same thing when she first comes out. Uh, Mrs. Maxwell discussed your uh, employment and living plan with you. She told me all about the restaurant. Will they know that I'm a... that I'm on parole? The manager, yes, since we made the arrangements, but no one else. That's the first thing to learn, Mary. Don't anticipate trouble. Oh, she also told me about living at the YWCA and that I'm to go on working as a waitress. I can't go back to my own work. You were an actress, weren't you? Radio and television? No. Nothing that places you before the public. And you won't be permitted to write or speak about your prison experiences, Mary. Not while you're on parole. Some of these restrictions might seem unfair. Girls get confused by them. Parole is a privilege. You were sentenced to two and a half years. You're simply serving the last year outside the prison. They told us that at the pre-parole classes. Usually I talk to girls about what they should wear, but with your background, I know I needn't go into that. But about this forgery charge that got your sentence? Please, Mrs. Carlson, I don't want to talk about it. I... I can't. I'm not prying, Mary. I'm trying to help. You're certainly not a professional criminal. Where I've just come from, that's an insult. Was it just that you wanted good clothes, wanted to feel rich? Or do you remember how you felt? I told you everything. Everything's in my record. I don't know why I did it. All right, Mary. I'll drive you over to your room and get you settled. Will I have to stay here all the time I'm on parole? I mean, it's nice, but... But you'd like an apartment of your own. When you can afford it and find a place you like, I'll check it and give you an okay. Thanks, Mrs. Carlson. Feel a little lost? Don't let it bother you. The girls tell me getting out's worse than going in. Freedom takes getting used to. It's a funny thought, but that's just how I feel. Sure. You haven't had to think for yourself in almost two years. You have to get used to not asking permission every time you want to do something. Of course, there are still a few things you have to ask me. Let me know how you get along in the job tomorrow. Remember to make your regular weekly calls. I'll drop in on you from time to time just to see how you're getting along. If you have any special problems, call me. I will, but uh, about your coming to the restaurant, um, won't it seem kind of bad uh, to the people I'm working with? I drive a plain car. I don't wear a uniform. Now, my feet wouldn't do for a ballerina, but I really don't think I look too much like a cop. Well, I didn't mean that exactly. Of course you did, not I don't blame you. We try to do our job, but we also try not to embarrass you. A lot of my girls introduce me as a friend or a member of the family, if they have to explain. Why don't you go out and see a movie? Don't just sit around here. You've been inside long enough. Well, thank you, Mrs. Carlson. Good luck.
January 18th, field contact. Restaurant, job satisfactory. Manager seems pleased with parolee's work. February 19th, no contact restaurant. Mary home with a cold. Verified at home with influenza. March 21st, phone contact. Mary returned to job, recovered. March 9th, office contact. Parolee shows start of savings account. Progress, excellent. March 27th, field contact. Black, no sugar. How's everything? Any problems? Oh, everything's just fine. I have some good news. At least I think I do. Gloria, the hostess here, is leaving. She's getting married. Well, Mr. Winfield said I might have a chance at the job. I was wondering if it'd help if you spoke to him for me. You're doing fine by yourself. Leave me out of it. I'm very proud of you, Mary. Thanks, Mrs. Carlson. You've been wonderful to me. Why did you choose to be a parole officer? I mean, what made you decide on a job like this? It's a living. Well, that isn't the reason. With your background and training, I, I bet you make less than I do as a waitress. Maybe I just hate money. Well, do you have any children? But you are married. I was. Sorry. He was killed in Italy. That was a long time ago. He was a lawyer in the district attorney's office. And in a war, even lawyers get killed. Hey, I'm supposed to listen to your problems. Not that you have any. Let me know about the new job, the important things that you're doing so well, that you've made such a wonderful readjustment. Mary? I better get back to work. A little something, Mrs. Carlson. Lawrence, you know the rules. Thanks, though. Oh, but that's not like a bribe or anything dishonest. That's to eat. It's a rule. How are you getting on? Well, I went to that place you said about the job, and the man thought I wasn't the type for it. But he wanted me to go out with him. I didn't, though. So now me and Mother are making this hook rug for our floor. You know, out of old clothes and stuff. I'm sorry about the job, but... Hello? Mary? Where are you? All right, stay there. Don't move. Mary, do you hear me? Just sit right there and stop being hysterical. Oh, Florence, we'll have to figure out a job you're the type for. In the meantime, you just keep right on with that hook rug. Why? You must have known. Even if you hadn't called me, it was only a matter of time before you would have been caught. What did you think would happen? I don't know. What do you think will happen now? I'll go back to prison. That's what I deserve. We'll see about that. I must say, you've got good taste in clothes. I'm taking you down to jail. You think about the best way to handle this and why you did it. I'll do some thinking, too. I've got her in the county jail on suspicion of parole violation. I can hold her 72 hours without filing. Sending her back to prison won't solve anything. If it would, we'd have no need for parole. If we had more psychiatric help at the institution, it would be different, but we haven't. And that's what she needs. She turned herself in. She hasn't touched any of the merchandise. It's all recoverable. And the Stores Protective Association have agreed not to prosecute. I admit they didn't like it, but they agreed. So many of our girls need psychiatric help. Why do you think this one's special? Because, well, basically she is special. I'm sure this girl can be helped. At least I'm sure it's worth a try. With your permission, I'd like to continue her parole status. 